The Extravaganza series at Pocono Duel number two. We've got an array of established drivers here today. Some of them made the race yesterday that are not here today and vice versa. There are still 51 garage stalls filled with race cars. Nine of them will watch from their stalls while the remaining 42 fight hard for this first ever second duel event in the 2020 season. Singing our national anthem today is Roy Orbison's Hologram. Sing it, Roy. And we're back. Here is our starting lineup from the rear chase camera. Rick Jackson, your pole sitter. He will venture off in first place in the Crown Royal 44. Second is Dave Miller, the Marlboro Virginia Blend Machine. Excellent qualifying run by Adam Crapser, Pennzoil. Fourth is yesterday's winner, Mr. Tim McDonnell. Then Bill Werkheiser in the Piper Cherokee 6 Chevrolet. And Scott Jackson in the 8-up Chevrolet Monte Carlo Black. John Tharp, Daytona 500 winner, zigzag Toyota Camry. And Johnny Reed Foley in the Amp Energy Chevrolet Impala. John Batista, Valvoline Max Life Monte Carlo, blue and red. Craig Lee, NOS Energy Drink Chevrolet Impala 101. Alex Crapser has had a hard stretch lately. Back to ninth in the point standings. Pennzoil, yellow. Matt Raboyne, Valvoline, Dodge Viper in the number 87 Quantum Racing. Phoenix winner, Mark Murphy, Red Bull. And Zach, my man Miller in the Oreo machine. Rumor has it he might leave Shake and Bake Racing by the end of the season. Ken Pettit in the Bob Marley Chevrolet Impala. Way up there in the top five in points. Ryan Heuser, NOS Energy Drink Sugar Free Chevrolet. He is still our current points leader, I think. No, Tony Pizarro is our points leader. Ryan had a very bad day yesterday, and he is struggling in the last two events. Needs to get a top 30 to redeem himself. William Tex Perry, outside the top 30 in points coming in. And Tony Long, the A&W Root Beer Machine, with a decent qualifying effort. Zach Michael, pole sitter yesterday, mid-pack starting today. Aaron Cummings in the Mellow Yellow Toyota Camry 51. Christian Torres, GameStop Top 20 in points, Red and Black 26. Chicago winner last week, Randy Dobbins. Alan Nesfeder, Coke Zero. Ampio, Jimmy My Man Stevens. Dale Rosendahl, rumored to retire at the end of the season. Failed to miss yeah, several, ra <laughs> several races so far. Dalton Lucas and the Little Caesars Pizza Machine, number 88. Ben Gear, third place yesterday. Top Gear, excellent performance. And Mark Guthrie in the 32 makes another event. Currently 35th in owner's points. Donald Stewart in the Muzzy Teal and Black, number 55, one of the most consistent drivers in the last several weeks. And rookie Jack Painter in the Toyota Camry Call of Duty Black Ops 33. Here's Matthew Dominique, winner at Sonoma two weeks ago, looking to stay inside that top ten in points. And Bink Lucas in the Lifesavers Chevrolet Camaro, number 30. His second straight event. Didn't do too well yesterday. Tony Bizarro in the Boston Red Sox Ford Fusion. Red, blue, and white. 
Jonathan Scrabix comes in 20 in the top 25 in points. Boeing 48. Brandon Rain's Xbox makes the show. Steven Spears Flexi makes the show. left. Drivers who did not make the field include David Courtney, Stephen Lowe, Brian Lowe, Scott Deutsch, Philip Parker, and others. A low day for Lowe's Motorsports. Lowe's Racing is having a tough season. They're trying to get into full-time racing, but the cars are just not competitive. They spent all of their finances to make the All-Star race. You want to hear a terrible news headline that's so offensive it's funny? Yes. A Kansas City mayor told in text message he should swing from a tree after issuing mask order. Ooh. That's a very disappointing comment. It's awful, but I find it funny that, like, that's what they came up with. Go swing from a tree! Nope. Uh, coming to the start-finish line, the blimp is in the air. And so is the green flag. Green flag. Green flag is out. Oh, and there goes Alex making a three wide into turn one. Oh! Big wreck. I think there's a wreck in the back stretch. Oh! Four wide. You think there's a wreck on the Steve Park! Into the inside oh. wall hard. Oh, this is going to be huge. Oh! Oh, oh. I'm glad the camera didn't pick up on that. That was awful. This is why we shouldn't race back to the line. Adam Crapser involved, and there was a huge wreck right before that on the straightaway. Like, before they even made it into turn one. Dude, Adam needs to go to the hospital. Get in that ambulance. He's driving into the wall again. Oh! <laughs> oh, he hit the wall again. Rick Jackson leads lap doing? one. That was a lap? Let's take a look at what happened from the Steven Spears. Racing. Looks like Bink Lucas and Jack Painter just made contact. Two guys who have no business being in the series. <laughs> and they really don't. I I dropped like a bitch too. I was sponsored by Lifesavers. What was the 33 beat? What? He didn't even have his turn signal on. Oh! I won't get that at all. Uh, let's get on board with the Tony Pizarro machine. Looks like he was slightly involved.
Looks like Jack Painter and Steven Spears got the worst damage out of that. Now let's take a look at the Adam Crapser wreck. Good thing that wall is way down there. Yeah, this was modern Pocono. That would have been really ugly. Even though it's supposed to be safer because it's asphalt. There was a yeah. couple wrecks in the bush race that were really bad just because they had that wall sticking out so much. Yeah, they have it like right up on the pavement. It's kind of almost like Dover. Yeah, like even like Majeski's wreck, he probably shouldn't even hit the wall down there. I miss most of the shenanigans. I have to watch and see what happened in the Bush Bonanza series. The Yahoo series race. Yahoo! Ah, oh, he's he was really worried about the second spot, and then he lost all of them. It's not a good time to be four wide coming off the corner, but Johnny Reed Foley stuck it in there, and... at the up schedule and I guess the extravaganza schedule as well is running Pocono and then going to Indianapolis like damn well that's how it's always been has it always been like that I thought they kind of broke that up a little bit no it was Pocono Indy Michigan and then Watkins Glen no, last 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 couple years they broke it up because Indy was like in September but I think before that, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. last year it was. 2017 was last year. It was Indy Pocono. Because 18 is when they moved it to the fall. They tone it. make it exciting. They tone it being the last chase race is so weird. Last regular season race, you mean? Correct. Yeah. Looks like during the pit stops, Ryan takes fuel only. Brad takes fuel only. JB... Aaron, fuel only. Lots of cars stayed out. David Butterworth back there putting on right side tires. Dalton Lucas. Why would anybody be hitting right now? Right side tires. Butter's been on the jack for a long time. They might be looking underneath the car at a possible transmission leak. Drivers that stayed out, Jonathan Skrabix, Tony Pizarro, Dale Rosendahl, Tex Perry, Jimmy Stevens, Craig Lee, Randy Dobbins, Matt Raboyne, Ken Pettit, Tim McDonnell, Dave Miller, and your new leader, Johnny Reed Foley, at the helm. Why well, was like every wreck in the Xfinity race a spin off turn one? They added some traction compound there, and I think it didn't work. It wasn't like that in the cup race. I thought it was funny watching that truck that was leading spin out all by himself off turn one. That's when I gave up hope on that race. Aren't the Xfinity Series cars faster? Yeah. That's probably why. I mean, they're not, like, dramatically faster. Coming to lap six, Johnny Reed Foley, Dave Miller, Tim McDonald, Ken Pettit, and Matt Raboyne, your top five. Green flag, green flag is out. Here comes Tim McDonald on the bottom. Trying to take the second position away. Tim will grab second. Ken Pettit underneath the number 90 for third in the tunnel turn. And he will take the position. Craig Lee battle for the 
second position. For the lead, Tim McDonald and Johnny Reed Fogel. And there's a fight. <laughs> a fight on lap seven. Tim McDonald, your new leader, trying to win his second straight Pocono event. What'd you guys have for dinner tonight? I'm a cozy three meat, super supreme, something huge ass pizza. Kama cozy. I'm a cozy. Is that the brand name? Yes, Aldi. Uh -oh. uh, it's like a take and bake, like refrigerated pizza that you just take and bake. Does it begin with a C or a K? What? Kama cozy. I'm a cozy. M A M A. Mama cozy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> So it's Mama Cozy, like two words. Yes. Okay. It meant to sound Italian. Is there a picture of an old lady in the front? No. No. Don't be ages. Jimmy Stevens battling the famed Alex Krabs. PS Plus? No. Well, if you do, you're getting uh, NBA 2K20 free this month. Ooh. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, they're giving that and Rise of the Tomb Raider, the sequel of the new Fear Trilogy. Very good game. I've not played 2K20, but probably be down for it. I played 2K18 and. Alright. Every. Basketball is probably the most fun game to play with somebody else, in my opinion. There's a lot of action. That's part of the reason why I don't like watching it on TV, because it's just like, score, 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 score. There's too much going on at once. 
and but each score means so little, so it's like, uh... And, like, college basketball I like, but pro basketball it just feels like there's no defense. It's just, like I said, score, 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 score. Four score and seven years ago. But college basketball, on the other hand, is like, wow! That's why I was really... Ooh. Really bummed that there wasn't going to be a March Madness this year. It's, it's been the only time I ever like really get into watching basketball. Well, that's good. I forgot to do my bracket. <laughs> <laughs> so did the NCAA. <laughs> that's what that's what they need to bring back. Like I think a, another college hoops game would be really fun. Ooh, battle faith. Battle max life. Ooh. JB and Tony are racing really hard for that position as... Whoa! Looks like we have another incident. Oh no. Tim McDonald beats Kent Pettit to the line. And... Uh-oh. Couple independents look like they are involved. I hope one of them's got great. Somebody shared on the Mad subreddit a picture of them going to overtime up 49 to 27. What? <laughs> <laughs> it said they let the Bengals score and it said they won and then the game crashed. Apparently, yeah, Fitzy's actually lost Tom by going to that 121 card. He didn't do well yesterday. Wait, that's who they tapped as a replacement? Yeah, I can't believe it. It's Fizmo. ridiculous. Alright, alright. Well, he right, got the right. top 10 at Martinsville, I think it was. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Fucking Randy Dobbins won or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, wait a minute. I just proved my point. Randy's We're not good. talking about last feel bad for Glenn, though. He's really... Glenn's actually ahead of Spears in points with the same amount of races. That's how good of a season Glenn's had. Do you have to remind me how bad Spears' season has been? Yeah. Glenn's doing better than last year, though. He doesn't have a DNF all year. See who comes in for tires this time. Looks like the entire field's gonna make a pit stop attempt. Are you guys ready for the franchise deep dive into Madden 21 tomorrow? What's a deep dive? They talk about what's new this year. Gale. Deep dive. They're like an in-depth look at what's new. I see. Whoa! John oh. Batista! New leader! What a stop! He didn't take tires. He probably did too. too. Uh -huh. The old four Penzoil cars taking four. Hegler must be asking how to hear from the pitting every ten laps. We'll see. Oh. 1883. <laughs> 1883. <laughs> <laughs> Really, I think what would make Madden better is less shit. Less shit as in, like... <laughs> like, less stuff. I think they've overdone it. <laughs> yeah, they just simplify it a little bit more. It should be like, play now, where they have like exhibition and practice. Oh no! 
franchise and superstar and then like ultimate team and online. What just happened? John Batista blows up their caution. Horrible. Rick Johnson oh, no. out. Oh. Horrible season so far. Had a good race yesterday. He doesn't make it to pit road. That would be a long time. He's going to have to limp two and a half miles if his car can make it. Wow. Yeah, I don't think he's going to make it. The walk of shame. Now, if that were me, I would just restart in that position. <laughs> just stay out there? Like the hell with you. Well, they're one to green, so this might affect the... how they restart here. Well, as long as... He's gonna pit, I think, when they come back around, and everybody will pass, and they'll be fine. One driver that will not be fine is Rick Jackson. Why the hell did Lego Lover just go and comment on a forum topic from 2003 on Delta Sim? Like... Wow. I had to upload my car. Oh, you're it's still racing that? Yeah, Ontario. I, you are very unsmart. I would like to run Ontario. Indianapolis. Indianapolis with palm trees. They're palm trees, thank you. Let's see if anyone gets a black flag from the Rick Jackson. Blow up. Batista trying to hang on on those two fresh tires. Tim McDonald will four, with four, will take the position. Jackson mission. Racing 20 seconds. Oh, 
server's going to be shifting today, Tony. Doesn't look like it. These guys are too afraid to blow up their engines this early into the event. Wow. Addition calls for a statue of Christopher Columbus of Ohio City to be replaced with Chef Lardy. <laughs> I mean, he is, I don't think he's like from Cleveland, but that's kind of where he made his, uh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he opened his first restaurant in Cleveland. The sad part is, real Chef Boyardee, when he was alive, was probably like gourmet shit, and now it's just canned crap. His restaurant still open? Eighteen ninety-seven to nineteen eighty-five. Holy uh -huh. crap! He was as old as Colonel Sanders, and he probably ate a lot too. Yardy sold his Rick Jackson for the brand name Chef Yardy. Rick Jackson has not returned to the track. He will finish He's last done. today. Ooh. Not actually spelled the way it is on the can. couldn't pronounce it. It's B O I A R D I, but the can is B O I A R D E. Oh, stupid Americans could pronounce that easier. I'll tell you what, the 78 car got so close to the 14, you had a zigzag, not run over. <laughs> Three wide That'd action coming into turn one, Whoa. turns Whoa. tragic. Get ugly. Oh no. Wow. Dude, when I saw Bink Lucas coming right at him, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> there goes his career. Alright. So Alex Crapser goes for a spin coming off of turn one, and he's still racing three wide with Glenn and Scott Drake. Dangerous. <laughs> Sounds like it. And the caution flag is out. Ooh, a lot of damage on the rear end of that car. I think they'll be able to repair that okay, but he lost a lot of track position. Sold his brand to American Home Foods for $5.96 million, investing the funds in steel mills to produce goods for the Korean War, which was a total failure. He lost all of it. Dude, Ted Williams must have made a lot of Chef Boyardee then. But the money he made as part of like his per percentage or whatever from the sales of Chef Boyer D, all kinds of money. The brand was grossing five hundred million per year at the time of his death. 
They didn't even get hit in the back. How did that work? He was born in Italy and immigrated to the United States. Sounds like something someone would do in the early 1900s. 1914 at the age of 16. Preparation of the homecoming meal served by Woodrow Wilson at the White House for 2000 returning World War I soldiers. Alright, coming to the flag, Tim McDonnell is still your leader. Ready for another round of yellow flag pit stops. I'm trying to think of another famous guy that's a logo like Chef Boyardee or Aunt Jemima or the Gordon's Fisherman. Burger King. The Burger King. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a dude. <laughs> it's just some dude they made up in like 15 years ago. Pretty is. Ooh, Alan oh, Nesfetter yeah. takes two tires. Oh no! Huge contact between Brad and John oh! Tharp. Alex is taking out his frustrations on the competition. Not in a good way. Oh, I think he got more damage from that than from the actual wreck. And he probably has to oh. pay now, too. Oh, no, he's pretty. Huge wreck coming out of the pit lane. Chicken machine and Xbox make contact. I'm going to go ahead and assume oh. that Chef Boyardee's original restaurant no longer exists because the area where it supposedly was no longer exists. Woodland Avenue and East 9th Street do not intersect anymore in Cleveland because we built an interstate straight over it, so I'm assuming that means we built the interstate directly over his restaurant, too. Craig Lee makes contact with Bink Lucas out of the pits and will take a tow. That's at least one lap lost for the NOS Energy Drink 101. It's one of the big disadvantages to that last pit stop. Sometimes you have to deal with the cars in the back. Like Bink Lucas. You ever had Chef Boyardee mac and cheese? I have not. It's kind of a strange idea. It's like ordering a cheeseburger from Taco Bell. So it's like hamburger helper almost? Well, no, it's like straight up mac and cheese. It's just kind of strange to. Chef Boyardee mac and cheese. It's like, that's not really an it Italian dish. Yeah. I mean, he's just Chef Boyardee. He can make anything. He's not necessarily an Italian chef. I think I'm going to switch my extravaganza sponsorship to Chef Boyardee. Dude, that would be a good looking car, I think. Dude, like, instead of, like, opening a can of Coke or Bush Light or whatever in Victory Lane, I'll, like, open a can of <laughs> ravioli. <laughs> Yeah! Ravioli going everywhere. <laughs> you just throw it around, everyone, like, hides from it. <laughs> Every Monday they gotta clean the pasta sauce off the car. <laughs> Alright, coming to lap 30, green flag is out. Alan Nesmith on the point, John Tharp second, Tim McDonald third, Ken Pettit fourth. Tony Pizarro in the fifth spot, your current points leader. Ah, 
on the first front straightaway. First back straightaway. John <laughs> Tharp enters turn two and takes the lead. Could you imagine a track with three front straightaways? So like, I think we'd have to divide into thirds, and we'd have three star finish lines. I think it Very be much have aneurysm. Remember the start finish line is down this straightaway. Now it's down this one. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> three wide battle. Oh, oh God! Three wide Ooh, battle. Both. Third position. Johnny Reed Foley almost wrecks the field. Hey, I didn't realize Kevin was in the field. They have Chef Boyardee Chili Mac. Is that just chili with mac and cheese in it? It's like mac and cheese with beef type thing. Top. They have throwback sports. recipes. Before sanitation laws existed. No, it's a new product for Chef Boyardee. Throwback Chef Boyardee. I kind of want to try that. Premium beefaroni, beef ravioli, lasagna, made with real cheese, beef, tomatoes from California, no corn syrup. Like ten dollars a can. Makes me think I should have became a chef because Italian last names seem to do really well in the food. We also have a cook. Spongebob microwavable mac and cheese? Oh, pasta, never mind. Squidward tortellinis. <laughs> pasta and butter sauce? <laughs> Rice with chicken and vegetables? Alfredo? Tim McDonald losing several positions on the start. Dropping all the way back to 10th. Battle for 11th with Alan Nesta. Coming off of turn 1, battle for the lead. Ken Pettit and John Tharp. And Ken will take the position away. New leader. First, R2W8. Second, R2W12. And last, R2W44. What? Reading reviews on the Chef Boyardee website, apparently their pizza kit doesn't come with cheese. Well, it's not really much of a pizza kit, is it? It's just sauce. Every review is, bring back the cheese. Where's the cheese? <laughs> no cheese, why? How many What's stars? Next? <laughs> What's next? No crust? <laughs> <laughs> Put the cheese back. <laughs> no cheese, no buy. Cheese, please. <laughs> we are sorry to see your disappointment of the removal of the cheese packet from our Chef Boyardee pizza maker. We make changes from time to time with our products based on a variety of factors. The kit now recommends to use your own cheese. <laughs> We'd be sure, really, no shit. We'd be sure to pass on passing your comments and feedback to our team. Thanks so much for the loyalty. Have a great day ahead. <laughs> Where's my cheese? Cheese is gone. Where is the cheese? Customer no more. <laughs> but thank you for your loyalty. <laughs> what happened to the Parmesan? Removal of cheese topping. No cheese. <laughs> All the reviews. Bring back the cheese. Every single review I'm reading is, where's the cheese? No cheese? No cheese. What happened to the cheese? This, these reviews make new Coke look like nothing. Pizza kit disappointing. Pizza mix. Where's the cheese? Childhood memories, no more. <laughs> <laughs> you have cheapened out on us and destroyed a childhood favorite. This was always an icon in my food memories. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> was hoping to pass in this tradition. 
loves to bake in Watkins Glen, New, New York. He probably went to the NASCAR race and opened up his favorite kit. And there Upset. was no cheese. <laughs> Yay, Ron Fellows is leading. Let me eat something. This is blatant disrespect <laughs> to your loyal customers. Battle for the lead, John Batista underneath Ken Pettit using his dirt track racing skills to get off the corner very fast and he will pass the number 8 machine for the new leader coming to lap 37 number 39 John Batista I really hope Chef Flaherty puts cheese back in this pizza kit cause good lord like I haven't found a single review I love how the kit is primarily for convenience Oh, here we go. Four months ago. That's the key here. Four months ago. Biggest disappointment of 2020. Not having cheese. <laughs> okay. He must have a pretty good life. Well, this was four months ago. I think at that point that would be a pretty disappointing thing this year. It was still two months in. I don't really see the big deal. You buy your own cheese, and it's probably gonna be better cheese than what it came with. I mean, I can't get my pizza kit. It's kind of shitty to not have cheese with it, but like, you don't get a pound of hamburger with hamburger helper. Yeah, 
yeah, that's shitty stuff we're doing right now. Closer to the top 10, always see time in yesterday's consumer neural energy 325. He's up to 13th right now. He's getting draft help from Scott Jackson and Tony Long. I wish Dale Jarrett was calling races every week. I wish Ned was calling races every week. God. If you're coming so down old. at a turn one! <laughs> I don't think Ned Jarrett's that spectacular, but he's not. I think a lot of it is just that he's a classic commentator. commentator. Well, so is Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. No, I mean, like, he commentated from an era. So people look back on the and look back on him
restart. McDonald lost nine spots on the restart, has gained them all back, and is your leader again. Lap 48, Tim McDonald. Right now it's Tim, JB, Ken, Ryan, Zach Michael, your top five. Then Zach Miller, John Tharp. Donald Stewart, Tony Pizarro, and Tony Law. Lap times have dropped a full second from the beginning of the run. Fastest lap so far is a 52.337 by Dave Miller, who is currently in the 26th position. second between Ken Pettit and John Batista entering corner number one side by side and we'll enter the stretch the same way as Zach Michael gets underneath Ryan he's looking to make it a twofer coming to the tunnel turn Ken Pettit will clear the 39 and the 20 side by side Turn three, the 20 will clear the 39 for the third position. Now it's 22, 8, and 20 coming to the lap 50 flag. Remember, Jesus Carson is very good on the short run, and then it fades as we get into a longer run. This racing has been battling that issue all season long. Except that as Talladega. As Bink moves out of line to get to the 11th position. Bink Lucas is leading the second pack. Here comes JB underneath Zach Michael. wide action coming off of turn one. John Tharp, Zach Miller, Donald Stewart all in the middle of a intense battle. And battle for the lead up front, Tim McDonald and Ken Pettit. Ken's going to try to lead his first laps of the event. And he will do so successfully. New leader, number eight. John Batista drops to second. It really doesn't look like we have two packs anymore. It just looks like one pretty much single file line throughout the whole field. I think every non-damaged car is just riding in the draft right now. It's the same way yesterday too, as we have a new battle for the lead. JB underneath the number eight machine. And John Batista takes his second lead of the day on lap 52. Courses we have right now is Tony Long up to the sixth position. In that AW root beer 
number 15 machine. Long battles for fourth underneath the number 20. I think your car is okay, Brad, because you're getting some spots on the restart. Yeah, I think it's all right. I think, yeah, I think I passed like half the field. Or half the field that's still running. Yes. It would appear that Steven Spears, Glenn, Jack Painter, Scott Drake, and Kevin Corbett, and Michael Henson, and, it, it and actually looks like we're, It actually looks like we're coming up the lap on the slower cars on the speedway. I believe that would be Mr. Steven Spears. Oh, no. We're going to give you a U.S. Air Force field snapshot as the drivers head into turn one. You see the Bush's baked beans car of David Butterworth, Jim Fitzmaurice, Michael Henson, Glenn Kaufman, and the Clorox Chevrolet. Glenn Kaufman up to the 38th position. And Mr. Bink Lucas, up to the 8th spot. He's an ARCA veteran at the Pocono Speedway. He knows how to get around this racetrack. Of course, he pilots the Shell number 40 on the Bush Manza Tour for Lucas Racing. Hasn't been a super good year, but he's making it work today. Here comes Tony Long, battle for second. Definitely the best run he's had this season. AP running the late model pro race. Huh? Is he a late model pro? I don't know, they're at Lernerville. Right? He said he was running Lernerville. I think he's running. Very... I think he's running a league or something. Oh. He was for a moment, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now we're starting to break away from that second pack. It looks like Alan Nesbitter is starting a third pack back there. But it's all going to get jammed up when we've got a lot to do. Steven Spears, the Fox Seal Cup. Here are the top three cars, the leader John Batista and the Chevrolet Monte Carlo. The second place is Kenny Long, Chevrolet SS. And third place is Ken Pettit, Chevrolet and Paul. Actually passing the 65 right now. And he is well, well, well off pace. No hood. It's gonna be a tough day for the flex seal machine. Guys ready for Formula One's return? When do they return? Monday. Where at? The steak sauce ring. Ooh, how many ones are get A1 ring? Ooh, the B2 ring. Oh. Bingo. The bingo ring. <laughs> They're running Austria. 
this week and next week. We're going to Hungary, Great Britain, Great Britain again, Spain, Belgium, and Italy. Beyond that, it's a mystery. Could they be oh. running Kirk of the Americas? Could they be running Martinsville? <laughs> oh no. Could they be running uh, a pyramid scheme? Who knows? Battle for the lead, Tony Long underneath John Batista. It'd be cool if Tony Long could get his first win. Of course, he in the NRL All Star Series was a winner one time. Auto Value Motorsports looking to get one of their first ever victories. Their first that's not Jimmy Stevens. Yes, because certainly Kevin doesn't have any wins. Although he's a former winner in the Michigan Circle Track Circuit. Former champion of the Berlin Raceway. So I'll say he's even better than Johnny Benson Jr. Dude, nobody is better than Johnny Benson Jr. Not at Michigan. Some will say he's better than Johnny Benson Sr. then. Look at Bink Lucas up to 7th position. Battle for the lead, Zach Michael underneath Tony Long. He's going to try to take his first lead of the day. University of Northern Ohio and Mountain Dew. Western Ohio. Thank you. Oh, Western Ohio. <laughs> Northwestern Ohio. <laughs> Unwo. You know Bill Weber. University of Mountain Dew takes the lead. Oh shit, it takes the lead. Better keep that away from Tim McDonald. It looks like the 15 is ready to come in. They don't call me the Do You for nothing. Wait a minute. Tony Long, Bink Lucas, and John Tharp in the pits. These are scheduled green flag pit stops. You'll likely see the drivers get four tires and two cans of fuel. Bink using his Bush Series pit crew, the famed 40 pit crew, and the ANW machine using his regular pit crew. Let's see who's yes. faster. That's Tony Fleury Sr. on the 30 <laughs> car, Bink Lucas. Tony Flurry Sr. His grandfather invented the flurry. It looks like the guys have gone about 37 laps since the last pit stop. That's a pretty good fuel window. As Tony Long leads him off of pit road. Here come the big leaders, John Batista. Scott Jackson, Ryan Hoiser, Tim McDonald, Jimmy Stevens, Ben Gear, be careful fellas. Too one much thing, congestion. One thing that might be an advantage to the 15 of Tony Long is he was able to pit with a clear pit road. Much like Zach Michael will probably be able to pit with. Won't have to deal with all the traffic. Batista is going to come out ahead of McDonald, then Ryan, Zach Miller, Jimmy Stevens, Ben Gear, Alex Crapser. Jeremy Hebo and crew going to work on that 04 Lucas Hauling Pennzoil machine. Here comes Zach Michael, Ken Pettit, Donald Stewart, Matthew Dominique, William Tex Perry, and Bill Werkheiser. And Johnny Reed Foley.
Look at Zach on that empty road. He's gonna become the leader when he comes out of the pits. No I traffic I whatsoever. See, I, see, I see Tony Long and Bink Lucas way ahead of everybody. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Holy crap. Who would have guessed this? Wow. Maybe those fresh tires mean something. Dude, I think so. They were a second and a half off the pace. I think JB so mean something. reel them down pretty easily, though. Yes, their tires are one lap fresher. And Zach Michael's tires are two laps fresher. Can Bink Lucas lead his first ever laps in extravaganza? The owner of Lifesavers is here today, and he's watching this from the Pocono Grandstands. <laughs> I think it's funny that Bink Lucas has a, uh, a, a page on the wiki. <laughs> What is Molitor Hill doing this year? He's not doing well. <laughs> is he doing anything? He got he another ride in the Wish Bonanza series, but uh -huh. it's not very competitive. <laughs> well, he doesn't deserve another ride because he underperformed in the <laughs> famed number 40. I want one. I see the headline that uh, Twitch suspended Donald Trump's account. Are you like me and learning today that he has account on Twitch? What does he do on Twitch? Yeah, oh, it, uh, I'm with Tony. What does he do on Twitch? They aired his Tulsa rally last week and recent re-airing of one of his 2016 campaign stops violated its hateful conduct and harassment policies. What? But he's the president. He doesn't make him do whatever he wants. What did he do that was so bad? Um... I don't know. Says some dumb shit. That's not. That shouldn't get you banned. Apparently, Reddit banned his subreddit too, which he did not operate, but was operated as for him, about him. Well, then I should be banned because JB says weird stuff on there all the time. Even well, I say stuff sometimes. John Batista level. passes his teammate Bink Lucas for second. I don't know. Battle for the lead coming off of the tunnel turn. John Batista under the A&W machine. JB wants some root beer. But he'll have to wait to the end of the race. New leader, 39. When I was a kid, there was this guy named Mr. Food. He was this old fat guy with a hat, and he would make food for like two minutes. And you'd see him the next day, and he'd do the same thing. I'm kind of wondering what his real name is, and if he was a real chef or just some random guy. 
I see. He's probably dead now. Because he was old like 20 years ago. Mr. Foo. I really wish Best Buy, or not Best Buy, it's not their fault, but I really wish PlayStation would open up PS5 pre-orders because I have $45 in Best Buy credit waiting, and I'd like to use it for that. That's like, a lot. Dude, I don't even care about Best Buy credit. It's like, if you want the game, just buy it. I mean, it's free money for credit. Yeah, but... I mean, I'll use it on something. Like, is it like 20 bucks, or...? No, it's like $45, like actual dollars. I have enough points from buying my laptop and games and stuff over the last few months. That That's how much it gave me. I get extra points, too, because I use their credit card. But I have like a $45 reward in-store credit certificate that I could just buy anything with in the store up to that value. Use it in combination with cash or something. Put a gift card. That's why I'm saying I'm going to put the PS5 on the pre-order. It's probably going to cost $400. And with my discount, it would cost $360. And that would be kind of nice. I would wait a year. Right, but my credit expires in two months, so I have to use it on something. Maybe not that, but something. I let it expire, then I lose all of it, so I'm sort of going to use it. You just earn points for purchases, and then once you hit a certain amount, you can set it higher or lower, but the max you can set is like $20, and then if you earn enough points for a $20 reward credit, it'll automatically issue it, and then once it's issued, you have two months to use it. Points don't expire as long as your account's still active, like you'll buy something every six months or something. Leafs are getting more reward points, but they cancel their gaming program. But I still get like three times the points when they use my credit card. You call me local Best Buy? Do you have any, have any copies of NASCAR Heat 4? Uh, NASCAR Heat 4? That's not what I want. It's funny, because there's things like that that only we know about, but nobody that we know outside of us knows about the gas pump. Stuff that's like normal to us, that's just completely out of everything that anyone knows. I think it'd be hilarious if I called the best buy store and got somebody who knew what that was. Oh man, I remember that. <laughs> now you're just going to get some 18 year old. It's like, fuck NASCAR. Fuck you. Yes. Ah, yes, I'm looking for NASCAR Heat. NASCAR Racing 4, uh, we're closed. It's <laughs> 2 in the afternoon. We and have you, NBA 2K. You answered the phone. Doesn't mean we're open. Bink Lucas's wiki page has been updated to reflect his 34th place finish from yesterday. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Dude, Bink, he might be a legitimate super speedway driver here, because he's really pulling through. Yeah, I don't really when consider get... Pocono to be a super speedway. Super speedway to me is like Daytona, Talladega. Like, I get because of length, this would be considered a super speedway, but I feel like there should be something to differentiate a super speedway and a plate track, I guess. All those old races, I've started to just consider everything over a mile a super speedway. What the hell? That's even a dumber logic. I would say anything that's... Back then it was anything that was banned. Yeah, like Rockingham, Rockingham and Dover super speedways. But Phoenix wasn't. Right. I consider everything under a mile to be a short track, and everything from a mile and a half to a mile, like under a mile and a half to a mile, to be an intermediate. Mile and a half to two miles are speedways, and then I guess Pocono and Indy would be a super speedway, and Daytona and Talladega would be a light track, I guess. I don't know, they don't even use plates anymore. 
draft track. Pack racing track. Well, to me, Pocono is not much different than being good at Dindy. Roundy round super flips? Yeah. Like California and Michigan, they're really just yeah. versions of Chicago and Kansas. And so I'd put them in the same category. But I'd put Indy and Pocono in their own separate category. Just because you have to lift a lot in their big tracks. Like I'd put Indy and Pocono, then Waterloo and Sonoma, and all the road courses, then Daytona and Talladega. Then I would do Las Vegas, Chicago, Kansas, Homestead, Atlanta, Charlotte. Michigan, California in one group. Then I'd put over... I don't know, like Darlington and Phoenix are two... Like, I'd probably put Phoenix in the short track category at this point. I would have put... Well, the hard part, too, is that like we run a lot of big tracks now, so it's kind of hard to really find short tracks. Right. Like, if you look at the average and track length that we run a short track, you could really... Yeah, like New Hampshire and Phoenix could all be considered short tracks. I'd, Dover could be considered a short track. Dover not. Dover's not a short track. But it's, it's way schedule. too fast. I'd put that yeah. with Rockingham if it still existed. Maybe we need to just ditch the uh, super speedway name and just have short tracks and long tracks. E-segregate <laughs> racetracks. They're all racetracks. What category is Martinsville? is a racetrack. What category is Darlington? It's a racetrack. I can't put Darlington with another track in any category. Asphalt and round. Mostly round, I guess. I don't know. They're... I don't know. Po Pocono's not an oval. Indianapolis isn't an oval. No tracks are ovals. Ovals have a curve going all the way around. If anything, these are like... Oh, Homestead. Oh. Did you just say an oval's a curve all the way around? Yes. So straight lines in an oval. You're right, actually. Never mind. Chicago Land's not even oval. There's two straight lines. There's one coming off turn four, one going into turn one. Okay. I'm just saying. You're right. I'm just saying. That's not a circle. That's an oval. Speaking of ovals, I think we're about to be three wide for second here. John Batista, Zach Michael, and Ken Pettit all battling for the second spot. Tim McDonald led the halfway marker on lap 70 and has led ever since. Pink Lucas drops back to ninth. Tony Long also dropping back on those old tires. But it's a nine-car breakaway for the lead. be back in one minute. I'm going to get some water. Water! As we go on board with the... Oh, no! I think we're going to post Oh, no! The 55 up in smoke. We'll delay oh, the water. Oh, out, Miller. I think the 55 needs some water in that engine. <laughs> Instead, Ooh, he found that's gonna Chef Boyardee. Wow! That... That went up in a big way. I think he blew up because of the RPMs. Because I was right wow. entering turn one. Tough break okay. for the Muzzy team. He's had such a good stretch. That's going to kill grass. him. Like 17th and I'm 30th again. Dude, you're right on the money. <laughs> you are 30th. I know, and I was up to 17th before we pitted. Yeah, you're racing with Adam, who's never recovered from his wreck. You were also in a wreck. Right now it's up to Bink, Dalton, and JB. 
Actually, Dalton is two seconds behind you. Craig Lee still one lap down. Let's see if the 55 is going to get back on track. Tough to tell so far. I don't know, that engine expired in a big way. It went like kablam. Tim McDonald looking to make it two in a row. Battle for the lead, entering turn one, John Batista, Ken Pettit, and Tim McDonald. JB will let off the gas, Ken Pettit will come off the corner, your new leader. JB making a run, coming into the tunnel turn. The 39, 8, 20, and 20, two will be side by side, by side, by side. Coming off of turn three, JB will take the lead. New leader for the third time today, number 39. for third between Ryan Heuser and Ken uh, Pettit. <laughs> Ken Pettit. I can taste my granola bars. Looks like Bink Lucas is losing the draft. He's used to those Arca Bonsai tires. Plan on starting your baseball franchise now that the yes. season's starting? Yes, I think we are going to be swinging for the fences here sh 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 shortly. I don't really have anything uh, left on my playlist. I've got through 
part two, and then I've gotten through my platinum SpongeBob. I got all the spatulas and socks and steering wheels and underwear and uh, paintings and uh, shiny things and um, I'm sure there's other stuff I'm forgetting, but I ran around and got everybody's bullshit together, so <laughs> defeated all the robots. Here we go, number 20, entering turn 3. My god, are we finally gonna win? It's been so long. One three Kansas races last year. Forever. Has failed to win one this year, but has 10 top 10s. New leader, Zach Michael. Here comes Steven Spears as John Batista retakes the lead coming off of turn one. Is there a percentage of the game that attracts like 50% complete, 80% complete? What do you mean by that? Like some games, it'll say like 60, you're, you've done 65% of everything oh. you can do. No. Okay. I don't think so. But I mean, like, you can see how many spatulas you've collected and how many socks you have, and... So there's statistics kept. Sort of. Like, it, each level it'll show you whether you've completed that task to get that spatula, or if you haven't discovered the task for that spatula oh, yet. Oh, contact off a turn... whatever oh, that boy. is. One. Oh... This is going to get really sketchy. Yeah, I like games where stats are kept. It makes it more interesting. Like baseball or football. I mean, there's not really like a straight up stat screen, but it's not hard to figure out where you're at. I know there's 10 steering wheels you need to collect in this level, so you click on that level and it'll be like 4 of 10 or something. But there's not like a page that goes over all your stats in any real detail. I think it was Vice City, you had to collect all the balloons, and that was so hard. It's like, you have 49 of 99 balloons, and you've looked everywhere, and you're only halfway done. WHOA! Off of turn one, the 15 and the 20 make almost heavy contact. Oh! Wow. And they both save it. Close calls in two laps for the Uno machine. Battle for second between Ken Pettit and Tim McDonald. Yellow flag. Yellow flag is out. Ken Pettit will take the spot. I don't see anything yet. Let's take a quick look again. I think I might see a piece of... Donald Stewart's engine laying up there in turn one. That could be what it is. Oh. Well, maybe not. Looks like shades Oops. of the earlier wreck between Glenn and Scott Drake. This one will involve two red cars, William Tex Perry and Ben Gear. Third place yesterday. Three wide entering turn three. And that was a battle for the Twelfth position.
Middle to the line. JB has a four car length advantage. And there will be 50 laps to go when they take the yellow. One more pit stop after this yellow flag pit stop. What happened to everybody? Oh, I think... Okay. They took the flag in the top five. Right. And, like, it was like Delta Sim. And they're all gone. Good battle. Drag race back to the line between Zach Michael and Zach Miller. Zach Michael gets fourth at the line. Zach Michael will win the advantage. And we're getting pretty close to green flag pit stops there. So it's a well-timed caution. Uh, yes. Here we go. Everyone should take four tires here. JB will not take two like he did last time. Just about everybody on the lead lap on pit road. Ken Pettit will come out first. Oh, looks like it's going to be a race between him and Tim McDonald. Oh! Whoa! What a pit stop for the 28! Holy crap! Zach Miller will come out first. John Batista second. Ken Pettit third. Tim McDonald fourth. Zach Michael fifth. Bink mm. Lucas. Excellent stop in the sixth. Oh shit, guys. Get on down to Best Buy. The Outer Worlds on PS4 is $1 off. Normally $39.99. It could be yours today for $38.99. Wow. At Lowe's, sometimes we have sales that are one cent. Just to make it look like it's a sale. Like a sale sign on it or something? Yeah. And color tag? It's like, was $28.99. Now, $28.98. There were sometimes we had to do that at Menards, and instead of putting like a sticky sign up, we had to like put a paper bin tag in front of the regular white standard price. And sometimes it would be the same price, just like orange or blue or whatever the color was that week. And I was like, why the hell is this on sale? This is the same price. Like, oh, well, it's in the ad, so we want people to see it easier. Yeah. I'm like, that kind of makes sense, but this is bullshit that you're making me do this. It's bullshit to the customer. Well, and then I gotta go through on closing on Saturdays or whatever the sale ends and pull all those tags out and just throw them away and I'm like, this is so dumb. And we just put like a sticky tag over the front of the plastic channel and then I can just rip it off instead of having to like open the channel up and pull the tag out with the Oh, tag. spin! This is hard to do sometimes. Oh no. Around goes the two. No caution. Down, Jimmy down. Stevens keeps going. He wow. saved it. I think. Not really. Sort of. <laughs> Let's see what happened here. We did a 360. Let me count them. 160. 130. 360. <laughs> Good job, Mary Lou. <laughs> oh, no. Bob Jenkins said she was prettier than Boomer Esiason, which I don't think means much. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can get out of here. Oh no. Mickey Mouse, Xbox console, <laughs> Spotify. Oh, your weather shows Washington, D.C. too. Like Candy Crush. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Sorry. It sucks! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, some of the 
greatest extravaganza series drivers of all time. Be brown. <laughs> no, it's just... Go back to the race. We don't want to see this shit. We don't want to see discount Paul McCartney. <laughs> <It's not one>. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I type Benny Parsons, and it's MVP baseball. <sighs> All right, I might have to log out for a second. Oh my God, the yoke. Disconnected. Connected. All right. Who's there? Who's there? Hello? Am I on Team Speak? Yes. <laughs> yes, you are on Team Speak. Are you sure you don't want to open N4? I think I was. What lap was it? Like lap 90 something? This is Pocono revamped? Yes. Alright, so Jimmy Stevens just spun. It was 95 or 96? I think it was right here. There we go. Yeah, and back yeah. to the action. Jimmy Stevens spins action. out. Coming off at of turn one. Craig Lee, who is one lap down, is now back on the lead lap. Let's see if he can hang on. Remember, his streak ended last week at Chicago Land by finishing 26th. Yes, that's a that's his first average finish. Ever. But now he's back in the bottom nine. John Batista, your new leader, with 45 laps to go. Bink Lucas. Battling for third with Zach Miller. Some said that he wasn't good enough to drive the 40. Some still say so. But he's good enough to drive the 30. Ryan Heuser has not led a lap in the Pocono duels yet. Quite an astonishing statistic. They have a rivalry with words similar to Corey LeJoy and Benny Hamlin from the Western Maryland NASCAR series.
What is it with Eldora? Ohio. Yeah, they can run Ohio oh. Sprint Week, but they can't run Eldora during Ohio Sprint Week. They're... That's a good point, dog. I don't know, maybe the county they're in? I don't know. Exactly. is open. Obviously, uh, other tracks in Ohio are open for Speed Week next week. Fremont and all them. Fremont. Fremont's. Fremont socks. Fremont. Fremont Land. I, well, not Lima Land. I think Lima Land's done for the whole year. They haven't said anything, but I have not. I haven't received an update from the race team, and it's been like three weeks since they said we're coming back in August. Well, your college probably is going out of business. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, that's good. They do. I hope they can just give me my full degree right now, and I can <laughs> be on my way. Hey, look at that. In three more laps, the scoreboard on the back tunnel turn is going to be correct at 103 laps. <laughs> I really uh, am worried that uh, the Eldora truck race isn't going to happen. I think canceling the King's Royal is indicative of that in reality. Definitely going to run it without fans, I think. But I don't know. It's weird. Like you said, other tracks in Ohio are running, but Eldora is just like. I don't know. They've run stuff with Eldora this year, haven't they? Good news for Eldora, I think because Tony Stewart owns it, they don't like, have to rush, like they're not in danger of losing their track, or, you know what I mean? Oh, I guess they're not allowed to have spectators because of the size of them, what compared to some of the other, make? capacity, they have a much higher capacity than like Attica or anything does. Are they willing to race without fans? I guess not. It's probably too much of a spectator sport. Eldor extended its self-imposed deadline to announce a decision on the King's Royal from June 19th to 24th. When that date passed without approval from state officials, they submitted a further plan to reduce capacity to 17%. Um, spectators remain prohibited as of right now, so they decided to reschedule the event. That's smart. Like, the big races, they shouldn't do it. Just redo it later in the year. The large venue advisory group, announced by Governor DeWine on May 12th, is chaired by Paul Dolan, CEO of the Indians. <gasps> it includes representatives from Ohio State and team. NFL, NBA, NHL, and MLB, and so on. Yeah, but he's going to trade Francisco Lindor for a bag of peanuts and some bubble gum that we can't even chew in the dugout. They ban buckets it's of called salary double dumping. bubble. Every team needs to do it. Fuck salary dumping. Everybody just throws out their players and the Yankees are like, Mine, 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 mine! You're a fan of the reserve clause, aren't you? What is the reserve clause? It was pre-free agency. Where a team was... Where a player was wanted to their team for life until they get traded. Oh, retired. no, I think that's dumb. I'm not a fan of that at all. I think players should have freedom to sign with who they want to, but I also think that teams should re-sign their good players, and by being cheap and salary dumping shows that you don't give a fuck about your franchise. I mean, yeah, Lindor's going to be expensive, but he's the best player you've had come along with your on your team since uh, C.C. Sabathia. Um, yeah, maybe Travis Hafner in 2006. Grady Sizemore before he got hurt. I would say Kluber is at least as good as Lindor. Maybe not right now. Yeah, you Because he was getting lit up before he broke his arm. I kind of wonder if maybe he's heading over the hill. But Lindor is just coming into his prime. I'm going to pick my top ten Indians right now. All time or right yes. now? Manny Ramirez. Albert is ten? Bell. Jim Tomey. Is this the 95 Indians? <laughs> it's just, it seems like it. <laughs> Bob Feller. Tris Speaker. Uh, early win. Bob 
lemon. I have to do more research on it. Not CC. He wasn't on the team long enough. I mean, he was with us for seven years. Yeah, but like four or five of those years weren't super great. He didn't really no. become CC until his last two well, seasons. That and he had a much better team behind him in New York. His ERA was really about the same, but he had so many more wins, I'm sure, because he had much better run support. I'm trying to think of other Indians that were good for a long time. Omar Vizquel. He just wasn't that... He was good offensively, but he wasn't like Roberto Alomar. Was his defense that's oh. well, he won like 15 gold gloves? Three wide battle for the lead. Tim McDonald, oh god, Ken Pettit, what is this? Actually, no, Allen's in the lead. This is a bad second. Uh, you are 13th. Okay. Jesus, what the hell? That's dumb. That's what you get for booing your own. Listen, CEO. Mr. Four World Championships in ten years. Whoa! Oh! 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 Oh my God! Can't be good. Oh, they're gonna get tight. Oh, contact! Wow! Holy shit! Dude, Foley, he's got some car control. Joy, Chris Speaker. It's not LaJoy, it's Lajoy. Whatever. Corey LaJoy. Wait, Nap Lajoy is first? Yeah, 79.8. What's his career batting average? 38. Damn. And he played second base too, which makes him like better. Uh, Tris Speaker, 74.3. Bob Feller, 63.4. Lou Boudreau, 61.6. .6. Stan Kovaleski, 53. I forgot about Stan Kovaleski. Earl Averill, 50.9. Kenny Lofton, 48.6. Bob Lemon, 48.2. Jim Tomey, 48. Joe Sewell, 45.4. Addie Joss, 45.4. Mel Harder, 44.2. Larry Doby, 43.2. Sam McDowell, 41.6. Early Wynn, 39.8. Terry Turner, 38.5. Uh, George Ewell, 37.9. Wes Farrell, 35.8. Shoeless Joe Jackson, 34.9. Bill Bradley, 34.8. We're almost there. Ken Keltner, 33.1. Al Rosen, 32.3. Corey Kluber, 32.2. And Willis Hudlin, 32.2. Top 24. There. Um, no. Let's see what his war was with the Indians. That kind of shows you the era, though. Like, if you were a good hitter, it didn't mean as much during that era. Like, Lou Boudreau, way ahead of Manny, even though he played more seasons for the Indians, it still just seems weird. Yes. That's the era. Three. Mayor Mayor's war with the Cleveland Indians was 30. How many years did he play? Uh, part of 93 through 2000. So he only averaged about six per year. Probably like but five. You have, 
But yeah, the figure two is more would have been a lot higher if 94 wasn't strike shortened and if he played all of 2000. He did miss like 40 games and somehow still ended up six in MVP voting. I'm sure his defense also hurt. Yeah. Because he was... Like, Fenway Park's so different from... really any other place. So he could just kind of lazy around and catch fly balls and get balls off the wall. With the Indians, you have a lot of ground to cover. Burt Bell's 27.5. See, the, the problem with the Indians, with you trying to say, you know, the greatest Indians of all time are based on their war, is that war is higher, obviously, the longer you play because the more well, that, seasons you play. And the Indians have, have never been, at least in recent memory, and probably are never going to be for a while, a team that's going to retain a player for 15 years. We just go through players so much because we get them up through our farm system, like Albert Bell. He comes up through our farm system, dominates, kicks ass, and wants to be the highest paid player, and we send him off to Chicago. Or free agency, but you get the point. And the same the same shit's gonna happen with Lindor. In fairness, though, you had so many guys to pay back then. Uh, yeah, I mean, we so did have good players. We did have one of the higher payrolls when Dick Jacobs owned the team. Why it's such a tragedy that our uh, payroll sucks now. I get that. Obviously, baseball payroll has exploded. And we're definitely not in the market that the Red Sox or Yankees or Dodgers are, but like, good lord, you're making enough money, you can pay people. The sad thing is, you guys are doing really good for what you've got, and I think Francona has a lot Oh yeah, yeah, we're giving him a 9-7 and seven team, and we were, we're going 12-4 and four every year. <laughs> yes. CC Sabathia's lifetime war with the Indians. Seven point six. That's it. Yeah. His lifetime was only sixty two. Yeah, but think about it though, 7.6 out of 62 is like nothing. 27. 27. Oh, 27, okay. That yeah. makes more sense. I'm on voice activation, so sometimes what if the first word or part of the word that I say isn't loud enough, it doesn't pick me up. Well, I'm guessing the last, like, five years of CC's career, as far as, like, maybe two or three just combined... His last five seasons going from newest to furthest is 0.4, 1.9, 2.9, 3.1, and 1.1. Negative 0.6 and 0. So, I think part of that, like I said, it's because he was on the Yankees in the late 2000s when they were really good again. He's so he really had a strong team behind him. Other than Verlander, who might have gotten screwed this year. He was the last guy that maybe had a chance to get 300 wins. We look at Cooper, he leads the league in wins, wins a Cy Young, and then follows it up the next year with a 9 and 16 record. He just didn't have run support in 2015. He didn't pitch bad in 2015 either. 3-4 ERA, yeah. 222 innings, led the league in complete games, 245 strikeouts. I mean, Pretty good. Same thing that, uh, uh, was it DeGrom, I think? Yeah. Same problem he was having. Of course, DeGrom is much better because his stats are, his individual stats are a lot better, even though the wins aren't there, but. He wouldn't get wins or losses. No. But his ERA was also 1.7 two years ago, and that's just insane. Well, the biggest problem is the lack of innings pitch now, where relief pitchers get so many decisions. If you take yeah. a start around with six after they allow two or three runs, you know, it's not really up to their fate anymore. I mean, Brad Hand was our closer with six and four last year. Closer, six and four. Like, what? Closer should be, like, one and two or something. Closer should have more losses than wins. Well, yeah, because ideally they're coming in in close situations, and if they blow it, they, like, really blow it. 
battle for the lead, Tim McDonnell and Alan Nesfetter. Huge two-car tandem between the 18 and the 22. Former teammates coming into the tunnel turn. It's the 22 with a half-car length advantage. And coming off, it's the Caterpillar machine in the lead. New leader, Tim McDonnell, coming to 24 laps to go. Johnny Reed Foley already? will take second. And Craig is still trying to get his lap back. And do a good job of it. Craig's the fastest car in the field right now. John Batista. Right now, the top three have each won the race this season. Tim at Pocono yesterday, Foley at Rockingham, and John Batista at Dover. And look who's coming. King Rocket Man Ryan Hoiser. We haven't talked about him all day. Lindor's war is 27.6 out of five seasons. And he only played 99 games in 2015. Second base helped so much. It's like Pedroia. His stats are nowhere near some of the guys he's ahead. First stop. Yeah. yeah. Kipnis is the second baseman. No. Well, he was for most of the window yeah. tenure. Yeah, not anymore. Threw him aside and said, fuck you. In fairness, it was time for him to go. I mean, maybe not, but we're just paying him too much. That is a contract I agree. Fifteen million for him, yikes. Two million? Five million? Maybe, but fifteen? Ooh, no, no, no. I looked at all of the brands, you're only paying him like two million. Yeah. It's such a steal. Like, he wasn't that good last year. For two million, you'll take the ups and downs. Brantley's was 24. What's that? Michael Brantley's war with us was 24. Brantley's a player I wish you still had, because he's still right in the But you yeah. never know. Like, you never know fact, that year my, my, when he's going to fade. My problem with him is that we didn't even offer a qualifying offer, because you knew he wasn't going to take a one-year deal and at least put a qualifying offer on him so he gets something back and he goes somewhere else. Play this like Bill Belichick, you know. Maybe we would uh, go a little further. Try. Belichick's the master at getting the most value. Tom picks. Brad Kozlowski has still not received a contract contract extension offer from Team Penske as of late last week. However, some people close to the team think the sides could eventually strike a deal. So Roger Penske may try to negotiate new terms first. He's just, I'll be honest. He's probably just seeing if there's a better opportunity. And if I don't is, think he's the number one at Penske anymore. There is a number one there. It's like co-number ones. I don't know. Oh, John Tharp comes out of the pits. I think he might have short pitted. Everybody has to pit again, I assume. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's going to win the race. Watch oh. this. This is going to be interesting. And Alan Nesfeder gets the lead back. Alan, one of the great Pocono racers of the modern era, sort of, is leading. <laughs> sort of. He was good at Pocono and N4. I saw him run there once. The problem is the 14's giving a toe for the rest of the field, so he's not getting much advantage. 
No. He might be damaged too. Nineteen laps to go. You guys see Kyle Larson finish outside the top three for the first time in 18 races tonight. What did he do, finish fourth? I think he was sixth, actually. Oh my god. That's awful. We fired. Again. Rico won. What was he racing? I assume. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Spring Week. Man sent but 7,000 to win. And Reitzel second, Christopher Bell third. Oh. And Larson sixth. The other heavy hitters. Uh, Danny Dietrich was seventh. He's another another heavy hitter, and Sims from was thirteenth. Did Tony Stewart race? No. I don't think I'm going any of the Ohio races. Wouldn't want you to get the Corona. Make sure to order your free $5 Chalupa box tomorrow through the Taco Bell app. Scott Drake and Jim Fitzmaurice coming into pit. Who? Fismo. Bismo. <laughs> Jack Painter making his final pit stop of the day. Top four in a single file line just prepared to make their final stop. Taking it easy. few takers. Looks like Tony Long, Dave Miller, Matt Raboyne, Dave Butterworth, Alex Crapser, Jimmy Stevens, and Kevin Corbett. Is that David Butterworth, too, in the Bush's Baked Beans Camaro SS? That is indeed. He's having a very mediocre day in the Baked Beans machine. It's going to be a deadlock between Tony Long and Dave Miller. Both going to come out ahead of the 14 as Scott Jackson and Tim McDonald, Ben Gear, Zach Michael, Bink Lucas, all in. Going two tires and fuel here. You should take two tires. That would make sense. I feel like someone someone takes two if they pit with less than ten to go. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh! Pretty sure the 48 just drilled me. Oh, yeah. Your right front is killed. Nah, they're driving good. <laughs> Dude, Tim had a whale of a pit stop. Look at that advantage. That was the best pit stop in extravaganza racing last season. Tim McDonald is the king of pit stops. Alright, here comes Alan, our leader. Think about it. Think about it, Tony. This is only the... After this, there's only seven races until a chase. We're going to have to keep an eye on the points from this point forward, like a serious yeah. look. Yeah. Because, like, the first, like, 
15 races of the season, you don't even notice it because it's like, ah, oh, it's still early in the season. Christian Torres is almost in the top 10. And now it's like, okay, these guys could actually make the chase. Allen had a really good pit stop. Let's see if he comes out ahead of Tim. Let's see if John Batista can match his Delta Sim win here. Actually, he didn't win here, did he? Who won here? I was in second behind you. I didn't because I got I got wrecked by Jeb. Was it Zach? What happened? Who won at Pokemon? No, Zach didn't win at Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I think Miller did. Oh, Miller, that's. Oh, right. Miller won. Yeah. No, I definitely didn't win. I was stuck in traffic and couldn't pass anybody because they're so damn slow in the corners. I remember now. Pizarro and Randy Dobbins, the last two to come in. Going Maybe one of them will take two tires. They're going to be stuck with Steven Spears, and they both take four tires. Fortunately, it looks like Pizarro is going to get around the 65 coming out of the pits. Oh, maybe not. Never mind, he is screwed. Tony Long has stuck in it all day, still in sixth. It's going to be a good points day for John Clark and Gabriel, if they can keep it up. Matt Raboyne, after all the trouble he's had, looking to get back into the top ten. But right now, the big story is number 22, Tim McDonald, looking for the Pocono sweep after being winless for the first part of the season. Twelve laps to go. John Batista had a terrible pit stop. So did Zach Michael, their Meyer back in track. Tony Pizarro has been a non-factor all day, still not inside the top ten. But, either him or Tim, maybe even Ryan, will be our leader after the day is through. and have to work together if they won't have a chance to put the leader to the down. That's a long way away. Yes, this is 11 pound back. To Lucas Race, who tries a big Lucas and John Lucas. The piece is going to clear him for the 11th spot. Pizarro is going to pass him with the 12. That would be bad for Speedy. He's back at 28, still covering Speedy. We'll never get a call from out there, did we? I feel even worse for Craig. Fastest car in the field almost, and stuck a lap down. They're making an Elvis movie? Another one. I guess. Scheduled to be released on November 5th, 2021. I guess Tom Hanks is going to be in it. He probably is Elvis. No, he's playing Elvis's manager. Colonel Parker? Yes. He was like 350 pounds. I, I, I'm just reading, reading the news. I don't know, maybe he'll gain weight? I don't know. Alan Nesfetter has gained two tenths in the last two laps. He's going to have to gain a lot more than that in order to challenge Tim McDonald in his Volkswagen. And we got a yellow, yellow flag. Oh, no. Oh, Back in it. God. Let's go. Set up a mad scrambled egg to the finish. Thinking. I think I have an idea who it was. Oh, no. Was it the 11? How tragic. Battling for the 29th position with Dalton Lucas. 
And he has every opportunity to pit. Oh no. Uh, and oh he no. He does not pit. Wow. I have no idea why Dale didn't go to the pits a little while ago. That's a great quote. Oh my god. Can Speedy you actually believe it. Speedy actually spinning was not a caution. Journey across the country. Sorry, right, Tom Hanks. Oh, are you sure that's not the Twilight Zone? Or Castaway Part 2? <laughs> oh, Tony. In 1969 at Flemington, New, Jer New Jersey on the dirt, Whip Mulligan finished third. Ooh, I wonder if he's related to Skinny Mulligan. I don't know. What series was that? I don't know, it might have just been like a weekly show. Um, <laughs> you can't see it right now, but Zach can see it. This is what the cars look like. I don't know what series that is. Whoa, what is this? <laughs> I don't know, some race at Flemington in 1968. Does this have Johnny Benson Sr. in it? <laughs> That's probably like what Johnny Benson Sr. Yeah. drove. Greatest of all time. <laughs> don't care what nobody says. Alright, nobody comes into pit. Your top ten coming to the green. Tim McDonald, Alan Nesfetter, Scott Jackson, Dave Miller, John Tharp, Tony Long, Johnny Reed Foley, Ken Pettit, Matt Raboyne, John Batista. There will be five, count them, five laps to go on the start. Can Tim McDonald win his second straight event at Pocono? Definitely gonna help having Craig in between. That's gonna Kinda be shitty. huge because we saw that at Chicago too. When well, Craig's Randy... not really slow either. Craig's gonna lose so many points. It's horrible. So is Lugster, and so is Rick. All right. To go. Here's Tim McDonald on the start. Green flag. They're fading out three wide behind. Whoever comes out first in this battle is going to be critical. They're fighting tooth and nail for that position. Scott Jackson. They're leaning on each other. Alan Nesfetter make contact. Whoa! Can Scott Jackson end his winless streak? We can caution, uh, caution. Yellow caution. flag is out! I think Tim McDonald's going to extend his winning streak. Here this comes for the Tim McDonald. Coming off the corner, I hear contact. John Batista and John Tharp and Ryan Hoiser. Sixth, seventh, and eighth oh. position. Tim McDonald's gonna cross the line first. Damn, I got like duffled out big time there. That might be for the win. I think it is. There's only gonna be four laps to go. Holy crap. That was lame. Looks like the number 46 is involved. Oh, shock. <laughs> What is he doing? Oh my god. Oh! Whoa! Oh no! Ampio, wow. Steven Spears, Dale Rosendahl, Mark Guthrie, and Kevin Corbett. All involved in the incident. Wow. A couple Lucas Racing cars did a nice job getting through. I don't think so. I think I might have got a top 30. And, oh! 
Speedy got the worst of it again. Right. And look at the guy who started it get through it. That's usually how it goes. Yes. In this wacky world of racing. Yeah, Dominique and Spears just made contact. In fairness, Spears shouldn't have been there. Yes, and poor Ampio. Speedy's gonna be outside of the top 35. And it looks like Jonathan Scrabix blows up. Here's the race to the line. Let's see the best angle here. It's probably this one. Because this is probably the finish. Tough to tell who finished where. It's all happening so fast. Let me get the helicopter. slow motion. <laughs> it's like I, I don't know who's who. Here we go. Tim crosses the line first, then Scott Jackson, Alan, Dave, Foley, Ken, and there you go. see if we get another restart here. There's four laps to go. And Brad, you're right. You crossed the line in 30th. Uh, I counted 31st, but there might have been another lap car in there. It's probably the number 11 of Dale Rosendahl. And two to go. There is no white flag. Pace car still has the lights on. Tim McDonnell is going to win his second Pocono event in the row, and he will sweep the 2020 Pocono races. Bearing nobody blows up. Tim McDonnell first. Scott Jackson second. Alan Nesfeder third. Dave Miller fourth. Johnny Reed Foley 5th, Ken Pettit 6th, John Batista 7th, Good Points Day, Ryan Heuser 8th, John Tharp 9th, and Tony Pizarro rounds out your top 10. Matt Raboin 11th, then Mark Murphy, Tony Long, Ben Gear, and Bink Lucas your 15th place driver. Randy Dobbins, Zach Miller, 18 Zach Michael, after being up front wow. for most of the day. Dad. I think that's your second straight 18th. Ugh. And Ooh. David Butterworth, 19th, as Tim McDonald crosses the line as your winner. Final turn, final time, checkered flag is waving. Well, just sitting there.
27th is Craig Lee. 38th, Dale Rosendahl. 39th, Steven Spears with a horrible Pocono display. Jonathan Skrabek's first car to blow up. Then Donald Stewart. And Rick Jackson. All with is this a rerun? Aliens. Yes. It's the same Tim track, Donald, so... Your winner in duel number one and duel number two. Hello, dog. Did you win? What are we doing duels at Pocono for? That's what, That's they, what did they did in NASCAR. In That's fucking stupid. <laughs> Tony, let's be honest. Who the fuck wants to watch duels at Pocono? Mother Nobody. Me. Nobody, dog. But people who come to the first race are going to want to come back in two months. They're going to want to get them both out of the way in the same weekend. Doug, if that's the case, let's get half the schedule over in one weekend. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, I did not win. Did you do good? Well, dog, I finished fourth at Knoxville, and then I was going for second at Mariner, Marinerville. And uh, got caught up in a wreck. And I the track, yeah. I... Oh, Lernerville? Yeah. JB, good job leading the Lucas Racing Charge. Lucas Racing Family of Drivers, John Batista 7th, Bink Lucas 15th, Adam Crapser 24th, Alex Crapser 30th, and Dalton Lucas 27th. Dog, how does it feel to be in the family? What family? <laughs> Ooh, Dog. Christian Torres going to do one more lap. Why are, you so against, why are you so against the idea of Bink Lucas, Dog? Doug, I've already told you why. Why, Doug? Because we don't have room for him in the shop. Doug, he's, he's already working out of our shop. shop. In the Bush Bonanza series. Okay, here's the deal, Doug. I don't know where that body and the wrap came from, because it surely wasn't in our shop. Nor do you have room to store another team's body. Doug, wasn't that your car from last year? I don't know. <laughs>